Welcome, welcome. What's up, y'all? My name is Alan. Welcome to our first episode of The Table. Um, and we are joined by five lovely guests. I'm going to go this way and have you introduce yourself. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Portia. I am 33, and I am in a happy and loving relationship yeah. with a woman. Yeah. My name is Latoya. I am also 33 years old, and I have been married for, with my to my husband for seven years. Yeah. Peace, my name is Jada God Seven. I'm 47 years old and been in a relationship with my lady for 10 years. Wow. My name is Jasmine. I am 32 and my relationship status is pending. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna come back to that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hey, you guys. I'm Asia. I'm 28, and I'm a single Pringle. Mm, <laughs> I like that, single Pringle. Thank you. Yeah. Right. You're young. All right, y'all. So, um, like I said, the theme of this is the table, right? So, in a lot of conversations, we talk about the table, the proverbial table. What do you bring to the table? What is the table? I am the table. He is the table. Um, I'm going to start with Ja. What is your definition of the table and what do you think people misunderstand about the concept my definition of the table is outside of the social construct of what people feel like the table is as far as man being a provider woman being a provider who has more say so in the household my definition of the table is stability you know how to create an environment where man and woman and child can sit at a stable table and you define it from there that's my definition of the table it's okay. outside of the spectrum of what people talk about the table is. Okay. So, today, we, we don't have people really sitting at the table. That's what we're doing. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Jasmine, what is your definition of the table? I think the table, kind of what Jai was saying, is what is agreed on or what is discussed as to what that table is going to be, what that table is going to look like, and it's the foundation of whatever relationship that you're going to build with each other mm -hmm. outside of the social constructs of what you said. I agree with you on that. Okay. Okay. That's really good. Um, let me go to Latoya. The table. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm going to spin it for you. Yes. Please. What are the different gender expectations of the table? What are men expected to bring to this table? What are women expected to bring to this table? Especially if somebody has been married. Okay. So, Entering my relationship, I honestly didn't even consider a table. I think where I was in my life when I began dating my husband was just curiosity. And um, I was also discovering myself. So I didn't really have any expectations other than, is this person a, a good fit in terms of allowing me to be who I am express my joy, express my happiness, and those sort of things. I wasn't really thinking it in terms of how can they provide for me because I did grow up um, with a sense of, a, of independence. And so I wasn't necessarily looking for someone to provide anything for me or to do anything for me. It was just, can I find a companion? And are we compatible? So when I think about the table Right now, seven years into a marriage, and the relationship has been over like 13 years, um, I see it as what does a, a happy, stable, uh, supportive home look like? And not what can I bring to that table, but how can we co-create that table together? Because I feel like the table is always changing. Sure. As we grow, our family is growing, our, our values are... Um, becoming more defined, our our goals are expanding. Um, the table is constantly changing, but as long as we have that mutual understanding of we've got each other, our table is perfectly fine as it is. Mm, mm. That's good. I like that. Okay. Hmm. Let's talk to the single and it's complicated, folks. What are your expectations for that table? So Latoya talked about co-creating a table. A lot of the conversation we hear on like social media is he got to bring X, Y, and Z to the table. I am the table. What's y'all's concept? I'm going to start with you. 
So, okay, so with what you just said, um, the question being or the statement saying he has to bring X, Y, Z to the table, to me that means that the table in some sense already exists. And um, I think, like, I'm not going to lie to you all. Like, I'm not the one that says, well, I am the table. Like, I don't know. To me, in my head, it's what do we both bring to the table. So to me, I guess I'll look at it as a table as like a foundation, but what do we bring collectively to it? I um, mean, really the question is, what do we want to bring to it? Because there are things I think we bring things that we don't even want. Um, if we're bringing ourselves, I guess, like figurative, figuratively speaking to this table, um, sometimes you can bring your traumas. Sometimes you can bring unhealed pain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something to consider like even when we throw that out there well i am the table okay are you a broken table mm -hmm. are you a, a repaired table are you a refinished table um are you a new table mm -hmm. so i think it's there's so many things you can bring to that but it just depends on how you look at it and how you really truly look at yourself as an individual so mm -hmm. for me I, I would love for the table to be like a foundation mm -hmm. um and you got to think about it like even back in the day they said like you know the man the man brings home the bacon and the woman cooks it. Mm -hmm. So like, is the man bringing what's being provided on the table and the woman's preparing it? Um, I think there's just many ways you can look at it. And I guess for me, like I said, I want to look at the table as like a foundation, mm -hmm. but I want it to be, it, it may be an ever, like you said, an ever changing mm -hmm. table because mm -hmm. we're going to constantly evolve and thinking about just tables in a sense, like, like a, they, how they look, their, their aesthetic, their um, cosmetic. We constantly change our furniture and different things like that. So how do we, how do we want this table to look 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. So I don't, that's just my thought on that. Mm. I don't know. That's real. It's, nice. it's just really, I don't know. It's really, it can mean one thing today. I like how you broke the tables down. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, because it's, nice. it's very much so real. Like, we don't, you know, you, some people, they get their furniture from a thrift shop. Some people find a, a dumpster dive and they get a table. So it's just like, in what, in what phase are we buying this table? True. We might not be buying the new table because right now all we can afford is the table that's the hand-me-down. Mm -hmm. But what will we do with the table that's been handed down to us? Mm -hmm. And then when we get to a place where we can buy the table, which kind of table do, do we want then? And how mm -hmm. do we want to set it? So I think it's really, sure. um, really how you want to look at that. How you want to set the table? That's yeah. Nice. Like how, how do you want to set it? So I, I like to add to that though because, mm -hmm. as I said, I'm pending. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as I'm pending, I'm learning that growing up, you know, like <laughs> for some people, you have this idea of like I'm gonna get married at this age, I'm gonna have kids at this age, and where I am in life, I had those expectations. Mm -hmm where they were completely like torn down and it was like, uh, -huh, new canvas, Same. what Same. you gonna do? Same. And so now that I'm in this era of dating, because dating is different today, mm. now it's like, you have to, you have to be like, okay, I have this expectation, but is this really what I want? Like, mm. or it's like, should I unlearn this expectation mm. according to what is happening to today? Mm -hmm. So it's like, your for me personally, I'm in a journey where I'm discovering, like, I have certain expectations, mm -hmm. but then it's like, okay, do I want to keep this expectation mm -hmm. or do I want to let go of this expectation and be open to something better? Mm. Uh, has society had an effect on your expectations? Yeah, like, I come from uh, my parents that have been married to now for 44 years, mm -hmm. and they're older. They're in their 70s. Mm -hmm. So this is a, an older generation baby boomer sure. relationship where we, like, that's, that's a whole different ball game sure. right there, you know, where you stick it out with your partner and y'all just, y'all make it work. Yeah. But today it's like, do I want to make that work with this person? Like that That's such an excellent uh, yeah. point. Because you brought up an interesting point about, like, the expectations between generations yeah. mm -hmm. and also the um, curriculum too, because mm -hmm. our parents' generation, a good marriage was a marriage that lasted for umpteen years. Mm -hmm. For our generation is like, am I happy? Am I fulfilled in the whole mm -hmm. night? Mm -hmm. How is that affecting the process of mating and the process of settling or settling down? So I think that comes with your self work as a person. Mm. You have to be self aware of who you are because the thing about being happy and fulfilled 
it's not the responsibility of the other person. Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility. The only thing that other person is supposed to do is add to what you've already have been creating for yourself. Mm -hmm. And there you're supposed to be able to coexist together where they're an individual, you're an individual, and you guys are working and you're choosing to be together. Because, I mean, that's the reality of a relationship. You're going to choose to be together. Mm -hmm. You're going to choose to work it out. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to say, this ain't working out, and you choose to split up. I think what's tough about that is, like, when when we hear stories about, like, our parents and our grandparents, mm -hmm. that wasn't their paradigm. They needed each other. Mm -hmm. There was no, I'm yeah. coming in as an individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Grandma was 14. Grandpa was 15. They ain't have shit. They built everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm to your point, by themselves, but that's not going to work in 2023. So, like, where do we go <laughs> in establishing this new paradigm and making it work? Yeah. Ja, you got any, any thoughts on that? It's interesting yeah. because when you said that a person comes to a relationship and they have to come to the relationship with fulfillment inside of themselves and the other person doesn't have to contribute to that fulfillment, I actually feel like it's the opposite. I feel like partners should be chosen based on fulfillment. So if you're looking for someone, you should be looking for them in a, in a manner of fulfillment. Like, what do they bring? You know, what is their character like? You know, um, what are they studying? What are they learning? What are they spending their time on? So that you can pretty much examine them before you even step into a relationship with them mm -hmm. to realize whether or not they're going to have valuable assets. Because a lot of people, what they do is they they lead with their careers. Mm -hmm. They lead with their financial status. Then that gets old. And then you're left with fulfillment with the person. But if, if you get in a relationship with someone that never brought you fulfillment to begin with, then the only thing you're stuck with is children, bills, right? And it goes out the door. That's why most relationships don't last today. But when you, there's a, how should I say, when you say people are led by what they do as far as their financial status and stuff like that, that's a few, that's a, a small group of people because I don't identify that way. Mm -hmm. How I identify is though I do have a business, mm -hmm. right? In that, I'm trying to maintain my peace. Mm -hmm. So while I'm doing all these different things, it's like, are you, are you just watching me struggle mm -hmm. or are you there and saying, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And how can I support you where you are in your journey right mm -hmm. now? Because I think of it as, if I had a family and a partner and I lost all of it, mm -hmm. who would I be? Like, would I be able to know who I am as a person at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. Or would I be like, my identity was in my kids. My yeah. identity was in my husband. And now I don't know who I am. and I don't know what to do with myself. That's how I and, view but it. I think that's what makes relationships so difficult today. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, sometimes I get upset at old people. Because grandma never had to think about that. Yeah. Right? And, and a lot of the anxieties that we have about even, you know, what if he leaves you tomorrow, it comes from grandma. It mm -hmm. comes from mm -hmm. her staying with the man that really didn't love her, really didn't like her even, uh -huh. but she had no other choices. She, she had no marketable skills and the whole nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is why I think this, this conversation is so important because the old folks would tell us, just do what we did, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna work in 2023. Mm -hmm. no, we don't have, we, we have more options than they, mm -hmm. they did. You know, from more people access. to, to mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Opportunities and the whole nine. Mm -hmm. So like, how do we, I'm gonna throw this to you. Mm -hmm. How do we create a new workable system for us from 2023, 2024, and beyond. Like in, in the aspect of dating? Dating, or, relationships, with um, all these new options and the whole nine. So one thing, like, as we've been discussing this, I think one thing that I'm thinking about is do we date to purpose? Because I think purpose mm -hmm. is something that we're driven by nowadays. Like you were saying, back mm -hmm. in the day, you know, grandma stayed with grandpa, even though grandpa had, like, two other families on the other side of the city. Grandpa stayed, or grandma stayed with grandpa because she didn't have a choice. Um, but grandma also didn't have a choice to to live out purpose or to f fulfill a dream even have a dream mm -hmm. and nowadays like we have that right we have that privilege so something that I'm thinking about is like dating to purpose and I feel like sometimes it can be like we date well as a single Pringle um mm -hmm. dating for like dating where I am right now mm -hmm. but what it like when I elevate 
Like, am I, like, am I going to find what you do now attractive mm -hmm. or am I going to find like, am I going to not even what you do? Am I going to find your mindset attractive? Mm -hmm. Is your mindset even going to push me to greater heights than what, I, you know, to what I need to do? Like, mm -hmm. do you speak life into me? Are you supportive of the dream? Are you jealous of the dream? Mm -hmm. Are you jealous of me? Yeah, so it's, I think it. dating, like, that's why I say now, like my, my approach to dating is okay. Asia, like, where do you want your life to be? Mm -hmm. The person that you're dating, are they speaking life to that? Mm -hmm. Are they taking away from that? Can they even see that? Because mm -hmm. I feel like as a woman, um, I want a man that's a visionary. Mm -hmm. Like I want a man that can, I can tell him an idea and it's like, okay, let's, let's put a business plan to it. Mm -hmm. Here's some action. So I think that's something to consider. Like, what is your purpose? Like what, what, what brings you fulfilling? Like, what do mm -hmm. you want to do on the earth? Mm -hmm. And you date someone and I mean, I don't want to say just particular to that thing. Like I'm a sing, I sing, but I don't have to date like a singer. Mm -hmm. I don't have to date like a musician mm -hmm. um, who can speak to that creativity. You know what I'm saying? Who can sure. speak life to that? So that I don't, I don't know if that even makes That's sense. That's interesting. Let me cut you off. Uh, my daughter right now is 22. So when I was raising her, I used to always tell her that a good man is not hard to find. You just got to pay attention to his habits. Mm. I think habits are a very key indicator mm -hmm. for for men mm -hmm. in like what you can expect mm -hmm. um, future state because I'm, I'm not trying to generalize, mm -hmm. but in my experience, um, what somebody does regularly or how somebody does one thing is how they do pretty much everything else, mm -hmm. especially as a man. Um, sure. My husband has taught me that. He's taught me this about other men. He's like, just just pay attention, like be observant, as you said. Um, and so we're going back to the conversation of like, how do we, you know, set ourselves up for success in terms of like relationships, whether it's dating. I, I, I even consider relationships just your entire community, mm -hmm. which is to me what is the most important thing about like looking at relationships and the trajectory in which it can take. Mm -hmm. So if you're with someone who, you know, they are closed-minded or they're very isolated and they t tend to isolate you, to me that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. Because as you were saying, you know, a lot of the fear comes from, oh, I don't want to end up alone. Well, if you're with someone who is a lot more collaborative in the sense in that they have a community, they have a village, they encourage you to build your village, they encourage mm -hmm. you to go after your dreams and make connections and collaborate and network and do all those things. To mm -hmm. me, that's someone who is thinking more broadly in the sense that I don't necessarily want to be your everything for everything, mm -hmm. but I want you to have exactly what you need. And to me, that is, mm -hmm. that's key mm -hmm. because what I feel is is missing with relationships these days, even as a married woman, is community. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have that, that sense of community mm -hmm. as much as we used to, I feel. Um, and it's because we, don't, we weren't really taught that either. Uh, I think uh, the pandemic has a lot to do with it too. You know, if we kind of isolated ourselves and we're kind of fearful of like being around people and just mm -hmm. all the negativity that comes up from groups of people and things like that. Um, community mindedness is something that I feel will, will help save relationships so that yeah. you don't put the pressure on just one person to be that everything for you. Mm -hmm. being, uh, being in a community of people that will be honest mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. When I was dating, I dated someone's potential. Mm -hmm. What I thought they could become mm -hmm. or what I, I saw, mm -hmm. what I wanted them to become. Mm -hmm. And I didn't date intentionally. I just was out there thinking about what I what I was supposed to the path I was supposed to be on and the trajectory that would lead me to my best. This is as good as I can get. The whole settling down, but when I realized I didn't have to truly settle, and to Jasmine's point, started getting me together, fulfilling myself, and started chasing me, then my relationship found me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I stopped chasing the potential and the hope, but I chased me. Mm -hmm. and try to figure out what is it that I wanted and what did I need. And when mm -hmm. I started doing that, it exuded from me. Mm -hmm. And what I needed and wanted found me mm -hmm. without any provocation, any extra energy or help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, like, y'all, I mean, like, it was like that night and then three years later, boom. <laughs> like, yeah. But I had to understand that 
you can't date trying to figure out who you want somebody to be. Mm. Who you can't date because you need this person. You have to date with the intention of ensuring that they keep you true to being yourself fulfilled, mm -hmm. but also to your point, they're fulfilling you more and bringing more to you. Mm -hmm. So you're already, your cup is already full, mm -hmm. but they're overflowing it when they come into your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like a relationship is a service to one another. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you have the mindset to service, then you can win in any relationship, you know, whether it be your spouse or just friends in general, you mm -hmm. know, what do you bring it to the table, right? should be service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when you approach things from a service standpoint then your whole life change yeah. yeah it elevates you because you're not looking for things with your hand out like i'm not going into a relationship looking for this woman to what you can get yeah yeah mm -hmm. no, i'm looking to serve what can what I, how can yeah. i serve so yeah the point to the conversation is a lot of men today lack provision mm. they don't know how to provide for their woman they don't even know how to provide financially. That's the case. In most cases, that's the argument. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, you can provide for a woman financially, but she still can be broken internally. So how do you heal that? Mm -hmm. You got to yeah. elevate her. How do you elevate her? You have to show her different paths. You got to get her in tune with things that's outside of the normal conversation. Because mm -hmm. when you start having those conversations, then you see her elevate, mm -hmm. and then she carries herself in a way of what they would consider to be your likeness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like in my relationship, my woman probably can fulfill, I mean, she can say my sentences because she's been around. She knows verbatim what I am and not going to get, in, get into. Mm -hmm. So a man's provision is not only solely what he can provide financially. I feel that's the smallest piece of a relationship because, like you said, the table can change. What if that man runs into a struggle? Who's going to be at the head of that table? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be looked at less than? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so those particular things, because if, a, if you're in a relationship with a woman, you say, look, babe, I got this business venture. It didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. So all the capital is gone. And now she has to step in and, and provide financially. As a man, you know, that's going to hurt your pride if you always lead with your financial game plan. Mm -hmm. but if you're able to let her take the seat and let her drive and say, she's going to be like, oh, baby, I got this. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. That's a different conversation. Versus beating you down saying you're less than a man because you can't do what you used to do. And those mm. are the conversations that's had in the average household between men and women. And that's why women look for men to provide financially versus spiritually and emotionally today. I'm glad you mentioned that, though, because that's something that I ask as a single woman. Like, I'm like, I'm not there yet, but there is a possibility. Would you be okay if I made more money than you? For sure. Like, would you, would you, would you, would you be okay? Like, would you feel <laughs> resentment? Would you, like, you know, because for me, it's like, I may not always be making more. You mm -hmm. may be making more, but when we become one, that's what matters as mm -hmm. to how we're providing as our whole family together. As long as you're not taking advantage of me and our money and what we've built, then it's like, it, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's just like, who, so it's like, are you going to be confident enough in yourself? Are you doing your self work mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that you feel confident enough? Like you're like, yeah, my wife makes more money than me, but you know what? Hey, like, why do, why do you think good. so many men struggle with that? I think some men. I mean, I think it's a matter of how they're raised. I mean, there's that standard of you have to be your provider for one. Mm -hmm. It depends on how old they are today. I think mm. the different there's a different generation today. Okay, let's say let's say our age, like M 30, millennials. Yeah, millennials. Um, yeah, I think that comes with you're supposed to be a provider. Mm. If you're not this, that, and the third, then what are you doing with your life? If Money is power. Money yeah. is control. Yeah. Money yeah. is Glad you what makes a person right. right. And when you have that mindset, then the man, if he does not have that financial peace where he's greater than, mm -hmm. then he's no longer mm -hmm. in control. Mm -hmm. He loses head of household because mm -hmm. she, she, what I say, she's wearing the pants now and she's the one that has it all because mm -hmm. she makes the most money. Mm -hmm. to, to, so play, to play God's advocate okay. for a second, do you feel like, this is back to you, Jasmine, do you feel like from a man's perspective, mm -hmm. there are certain characteristics that come along with a woman who quote unquote makes more? Do you think there are some perhaps emasculating characteristics that she embodies. So it's not about him being insecure, it's her, about her being domineering. Do you feel like there's some 
mm-hmm. something to that sometimes? I think there's some women that are like that, yes. Mm-hmm. But I but I also believe that it's fabricated in the man's mind that mm-hmm. he equates having a certain financial status to his worth. Mm-hmm. But do you think it's also fabricated in a woman's mind mm-hmm. that it equates having a certain level of submission to a man being above her, a man being more larger than her, whether financially, physically, emotionally, all Um, that. I think that comes with discernment because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if he makes more money to me, more money than me, please know that I'm trusting you to be in a position where I know you're not going to take advantage of me because you make more money than me. Mm-hmm. That's a conversation to be had on that. But there are some people that don't talk about that because that's all they do care about. Mm-hmm. They All they do care about is being provided for and having money. So the conversation is not even there, and the mm-hmm. man's just doing whatever, and as long as she's being provided for or he's being provided for, mm-hmm. they don't need to have a conversation on mm-hmm. anything. Okay, let, let, let's <laughs> take it away from finance. Okay. I, I think it, 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 it'll, be, yeah, it'll be easier to look yeah. at it this way. Like, Do you think most women would be comfortable dating a man who's shorter than them? Shorter than mm-hmm. them? Most women? Yeah. The answer is no. Why? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I think one that's based on society mm-hmm. and the standards that's just just been thrown out there in the media mm-hmm. for one. Mm-hmm. But in real, I mean, being realistic, some people don't care about that. They're yeah. like, as long as you're good to me, yeah. <laughs> that's all that matters. Because there are some women, I will say, they're taller and there are people that will be like, oh, my God, a tall woman. And that's all that they care about. They don't care about her heart. They don't mm-hmm. care about her spirit, who she is as a person, just because she's tall. Mm-hmm. That's all that they want. So, I think the, the point I'm, I'm trying to drive at is, like, mm-hmm. a lot of times we talk about how some of these traditional societal expectations affected men. Yeah. And our ability to be in a situation like you described where yeah. he's less than the woman. Yeah. But we don't talk about how it affects women. Like, the reality is most women would be uncomfortable with a man who makes less than them. Most women are seeking, like, if every woman had it their way, mm-hmm. the guy would be larger, mm-hmm. larger than life, more intelligent. I want him to lead me, learn something the whole mm-hmm. nine. Mm-hmm. So maybe subconsciously there is a different way that women talk. And, you know, you know this as a man. Yeah. He knows this as a man. There is a different way a woman talks to you when she sees you as less than mm-hmm. for sure. versus seeing you oh, as more. Yeah. And she might not even be conscious of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, I, I think men should receive a little bit of benefit of, of, of the doubt. And I think it's it's more difficult these days because some people look like money, but they're broke. Mm. Sure. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and they're, they're looking for somebody else who can uh, who they can look good as a unit with, but they both broke. Right, so they don't ex- respect the guy in a Honda, but he has a 401k. They respect the guy in a Ferrari or Mercedes, but he doesn't have any money saved up. But if you break that down, right, mm-hmm. it's a matter of priorities. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, if a man is not making as much money right now, right, mm-hmm. if I know that you're working towards having more for yourself, and you're showing me that you're disciplined, that you're consistent. That's what matters to me. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a play. I know that sounds crazy, but... No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it doesn't sound I'm crazy a, I'm at all. I'm going to play on what he's getting at here mm-hmm. because I understand it. So in my, in my dating world, I, yeah. I typically made the most money. Every man I've dated, I did, made more money than them. Yeah. You're going to pipe down when you're talking to me. <laughs> it's how I approach the situation. <laughs> and I'm like, not no joke, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't have enough to cover your part of the rent this month? Uh-huh. Don't expect me to cook for you either. Mm. You need to, I, I just told one, you need to go talk to your mama about where Ooh. you're going to stay mm. this month. That's you real. Me? And oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm being honest because it's like, if you can't provide <laughs> yeah. with me yeah. and I'm doing all the work, I'm the man. That's, that was my mindset. I'm the man right now. Yeah. What do I need you for? Mm. Talk to me when you've got what is necessary to keep this household intact because if I'm the one that's doing it, that's tough. I don't really need you. What do I need you for? That's tough. I mean, that was, that was a horrible way to be and think, mm-hmm. Yeah. but that was me because I'm strong, independent. I'm making yeah. the money. Mm-hmm. I got the car that works all the time. I'm all of this. Yeah. What are you bringing? But to, to be fair, stress? that's more consistent with the majority. That's the majority, right. that's what, that's what like that's, the majority of women are. won't admit that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, if you, if you, if she mm-hmm. doesn't look up to you in some way, shape or form, mm-hmm. 
most women, in my experience, my little pimping journey, they're gonna like, they you. listen. Yeah. Listen. Most? How do? What, what data well, points are we using? There's a large majority. I think majority. it depends. But, I think mm-hmm. it depends on what it is. Because, like you say, you want somebody that's visionary. If if I ask you what are your goals and you don't have nothing in mind, I'm like, all right, well, I have goals, and so at this point, I'm assuming that you're not you're not gonna understand where I'm trying to go. Mm-hmm. Which is when you talk about compatibility and your priorities. Yeah. So in our in our relationship. Um, the position of the breadwinner has changed several times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even when I was the breadwinner um, and we had to have those conversations about, you know, our finances and how things are going to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. But it kind of, to me, it goes back to like, what are your habits? Mm-hmm. If you're taking mm-hmm. care of yourself and you're taking care of the things that you have, even when you are not, you know, the primary breadwinner, mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Right. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Now there, now I would not, <laughs> I would not, you know, demean because we've had a conversation too he's yeah. like i don't care if you make more money than me just don't rub it in my face right mm-hmm. I, i'm okay with that like that's fair that's yeah. plenty fair um but to me it's all about like i need to know that even with what you have like you're taking care of that like right. to me that's what a provider does like can you can you make sure that the house is kept up right like Mm-hmm. I don't have to go hire a handyman to go fix something because, you know, mm-hmm. you're attending to what needs to be done in the house or whatever the case may be. Like, it doesn't always have to be about can you pay this bill, yeah. right. but can we take care of the things that we care about together? Right. But I, I think, again, I have to represent the brothers, right? Mm-hmm. I think what you're saying is a thoughtful response to that type of situation. But the reality that a lot of men are encountered with in the wild is like, most women aren't thinking that deep. Mm -hmm. Most women are, oh, you are shorter than me, and oh, you're smaller than me, and oh, you make less than me, and you're less educated, and. But that's a projection. We can can, can give you the that it's that's a thought process, Mm -hmm. but it's also unfair to say that it's most women. Yeah. And the the fallacy that comes into play is that oh, I have to become what she wants. Mm -hmm. If this woman is presenting these things to you and you see her in this light, because if she's that way and she's that shallow, Mm -hmm. it's going to be evident in everything that she does. I I don't think it's a shallow thing, actually. Well, What do you think it is? That's just just, Mm -hmm. just my personal take on it, because it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, you're... Because my girlfriend doesn't like that I'm taller than her. (laughs) Like, it's just just shallow things that don't really matter. But Mm -hmm. if those things are like what plays into what they consider to be, I guess, what they consider to be important. If it's, mm-hmm. they're, they're, you know, non-negotiables, mm-hmm. and you as a man are uncomfortable with their non-negotiables, mm-hmm. why do you pursue and right. chase those things? Because mm-hmm. men will fuss and complain about the expectations that women have put on them, but then you go out here and buy this charger that you got a mm-hmm. 38% right. yeah. interest rate on, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. get these shoes that are two or three hundred dollars <laughs> on. That's called that's subprime Very credit. True. I used to work in. I know about mm-hmm. it. But you go and do these things to put out this image of that you have these things so that you can get these women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're setting yourself up for failure, and you're perpetuating this cycle that is causing women to want these things and need these things, and you're trying to live up to them, quote unquote. But you can't. So the vicious cycle is going to continue because yeah. because that that pressure is applied by women. But you no. don't, but pressure, but pressure can disagree. either bust pipes or it can make disagree. diamonds. No, what so I'm saying is you have to make that decision. Let me explain my point. Like you're saying, a man is is trying to go out and, and upkeep mm-hmm. this particular image. Why is he trying to upkeep this particular image? Because, because he's more security. attractive. He's more attractive. He's more attractive to the woman. Sure. At this point, which woman? Which woman? We're not talking yeah. about most women. We're not, we're not talking about the the conscience woman that's found their way. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the average woman who looks for a man's provision. But can well, I just ask how I how is that. that pressure being like? To me, how is the pressure being put on by the woman? I think it's just like that's a pressure you may be taking on yourself yeah. because mm-hmm. it's just like is that what you're trying no, to because, attract? Okay, let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. When women are brought up in a household with their mothers who are single mothers, what type of conversations do you think they're having? With the mother. Independent. What, what is the mother saying? Make sure that my, my, my mother was a single mother. Okay. And, and so I, ne- I never knew my father. My older brother knew his father. My mom never disrespected that man to my mom was in, in my brother's presence or mine. But she taught me and my brother both to be strong and independent. Mm-hmm. We both had to learn how to cook, how to maintain a household. So there's this stigma saying that women like, you, can't, you don't need no man for nothing, all this stuff. And my mama never dated in front of us. Mm. She had Frank, but she never dated. But she never told me 
like men are bad. She never instilled in me this, oh, be independent, be by yourself. It's be independent, be ready, make sure you have it on your own, mm -hmm. that you don't need nobody, but it's okay to be with someone. Mm -hmm. So at those sing all single mothers aren't out here trying to say you don't need get what you can from this man or you don't need no man. It's but that's the reality, though. Yeah. That's you, baby, I, your reality. I think, but right. I, I think outside the context of like relationships, um, and and that that goes back to my first point about the dynamics changing, because the natural quote unquote traditional dynamics is the man is the leader, the man is the head, you follow his lead, right? Mm -hmm. And right now we're trying to renegotiate what that is. Maybe the woman's the lead. Maybe the woman is in charge in the whole nine. And I think that's why it's so difficult for us. But since time of memoriam. When we look at leadership, mm -hmm. when we look to leadership, whether in the wild, with animals, whether mm -hmm. a president, I think uh, I read something that said every U.S. president has been above the average height mm -hmm. of his time period, right? Mm -hmm. There is something innate to the human mm -hmm. species to look up mm -hmm. to somebody we're going to follow. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to think you're better than me in some type of way for me to take your guidance. Sure. And in a male-female dynamic where... The truth is women are still looking for that. Even mm -hmm. what you said about, I want somebody I can learn from, I want somebody I can look up to. There's still that, whether it's a little look up because he's taller or look up to because he knows something you don't. Mm -hmm. There still is that expectation that he is building, bringing more to this proverbial table than I am. And he's going to help me multiply the things that I'm bringing to the table. He's going to teach me stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I could learn stuff from him, just like you said. He could help grow my business. And it, th th these are still expectations, if we're being honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question for the fellas at the table then. So mm -hmm. what do you feel that women, what do you feel women should bring to this proverbial table? You want to go first, Ja? Yeah, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. um, the divine presence of her love and nurturing is first. Mm -hmm. Because if she has that, then she can, she can lead the household, right? She can take constructive criticism without being argumentative. So if a man is coming in and he's being the leader of the household in a way where it's not disrespectful, but it's leading and she doesn't want to listen to the lead and she's more of the type of woman that is very dismissive to his lead, then she should lead first with the love and nurturing Mm -hmm. and the ability to be able to listen mm -hmm. to the guidance. Mm -hmm. That's first. That's a good question. Yes. Sure. Okay, and the only reason I ask this question is because when I was younger, I would always hear, um, Asia, you're going to have a really hard time submitting to someone. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I used to hear that all the time. But just like listening to what you said, like when you said argumentative. Mm -hmm. um, so what if like what she's saying isn't to cause an argument mm -hmm. but just to provide a different perspective mm -hmm. like what if what she brings can be like hey like the way you're doing it is mm -hmm. great but mm -hmm. what if we looked at it from this angle also to mm -hmm. cover this base as well because i feel like sometimes like i felt i feel like i've been said or maybe labeled as combative and argumentative mm -hmm. and it's like i'm not saying like in me providing a different mm -hmm. perspective it isn't <laughs> saying that what you're saying is wrong mm -hmm. but it's like sometimes if you're only looking at one part part of the picture mm -hmm. from this one angle mm -hmm. and i'm looking at it from a different thing we can be looking at the same thing like mm -hmm. even this cell phone sitting right here on the table mm -hmm. the angle in which i'm looking at it i see that the time is 9 29. if you look at it from a different angle you're going to see something totally different sure. so it's just like what if like in a loving way For in sure. a nurturing way sure. um can the like would you consider it argumentative or combative combative if she says okay well what if what if we did something like this or is mm -hmm. that because you like you were talking about leading and she yeah. brings her nurturing presence and take and listen to the lead mm -hmm. but what if she tried to add a little you know add a little let, something. let me jump in there because i want to answer your question too at the same time yeah. so i think you know when, whenever i think of like gender dynamics i think about it from like the perspective of children mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. And I've said this on the channel, like sure. men teach their children how to survive. Women teach their children why to survive. Mm -hmm. So I think what a woman brings to the proverbial table is perspective, mm -hmm. to your point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, like a world without women, like men would survive, but they wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like just rudimentary, they would survive, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be a world worth living in, mm -hmm. right? And that's because women give life color. Mm -hmm. Like, you ever seen a single dude, like, he got a couch mm -hmm. and two things in the fridge and that, and we comfortable with that, and, but the woman comes in and turns that into a home. Are you how you 
dress. Like, exactly. Yeah. Women make us better. That's that's the reality of it. Now, with that being said, I think some of our sisters who are struggling with the argumentative, combative, it's all about delivery. And unfortunately, a lot of our, our women have had to assume a masculine disposition, yes. masculine posture, mm -hmm. you know, because you've had to protect yourself and provide for yourself. And over time, it was the saying, um, pressure's made for shoulders, not hips. Mm -hmm. Over time, that makes you calloused. For sure. And it gives you insight into why dudes are the way that we are. Like, we're not emotional, the whole not. You have to be that to move through the world, to bust through walls. Your, your knuckles have to be rough, right? Mm -hmm. And then when women experience that, it makes you a bit more like a man. So when you meet a man, he's not going to gel well with you because you're another man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if he likes men, then that might... If, or, or if he's a more submissive, more effeminate man, then there might be some synergy there. Mm -hmm. But if you meet another man with masculine energy and you come in with masculine energy, you don't know how to... I'm talking about from the delivery of your voice sure. mm -hmm. to your presentation and the whole mm -hmm. night. Men like soft because we have to be hard. For mm -hmm. sure. And unfortunately, I think a lot of... Um, what we're seeing from our women in particular is a lot of things have made y'all hard mm -hmm. and you don't know how to be soft anymore, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I to lead with love because that's important for a man when you lead with that energy. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can receive anything. Okay. That, you know, that was just my question. Yeah, we can like, receive if anything. I say it in a loving way, mm -hmm. but said, oh, yeah. like the perspective. Well, I, I think the first thing though, like a lot of um, what I hear from people is like, she doesn't trust me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think first and foremost, like you have to do your vetting and due diligence up front yes. mm -hmm. to Absolutely. know the caliber of man that you are. So you're not questioning him every two, sure. three sentences that he, he makes because it's going to irritate the man. Mm -hmm. sure. So that when you are pillow talking or giving him that back rub and mm -hmm. telling him, well, babe, did you think about it like this? He can better receive it. Sure. But if you're constantly questioning his intelligence because that's how it comes off sure. to us. For sure. Like you think I didn't see that? I saw that twice before you did. Mm -hmm. Right then it becomes like, oh, she thinks she could do my job better than me. And it, it was interesting, and I, I think I asked you this during our interview. Yeah, you know, you know I'm over here boring. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. I, 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 think, I think I asked her this during, during our interview. Um, if you were a man, mm -hmm. like if you woke up tomorrow and you were a man, what kind of man would you be? Mm -hmm. Now, I've asked every woman I've interviewed that, and I've asked every man I've interviewed that. Mm -hmm. I found something. Women claim that they would be just a male version of themselves, on average. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Men claim they'd be a completely different person, mm -hmm. which lets me know that men, on average, based on my interviews, right, mm -hmm. men have more of an appreciation of the complexity and the difference of femininity in mm -hmm. the woman journey mm -hmm. than women have of the men because a lot of women think they can simply just step into manhood yeah. with what they have in their disposition so they don't see value or the difference of value that manhood brings to the table. Hold up. I don't Pause. agree with that one either. <laughs> Hold on. Because, I, don't agree. I mean, that's an interesting perspective, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's that women don't see the value because right. a couple of men that I've dated before in the past have told me that I didn't, need, I didn't need a man because I was a man. And it wasn't because I was demeaning or all of this. It's because I'm going to have those conversations with you. Mm -hmm. I've never been one to just let someone blindly lead me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is not, that, that's probably out of my survival mode, yeah, out of absolutely. me having to do yeah. what I've had to do to make it most of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm, I was always unapologetic about it. Mm -hmm. And the men, for me, that a man that wanted to be made to feel like a man mm -hmm. bothered me because it wasn't, that's not my duty. Right. It's not my job to make you feel how you should always feel. Mm -hmm. And it's not my job to make you feel better about the fact that you feel less than because of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that means that there's something wrong with you that you're not doing enough of. Because I thrive in my feminine energy when I'm in any kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. I thrive in it. So mm -hmm. if you're doing what is necessary to bring it out of me, mm -hmm. you'll reap the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, no. Mm -mm. No, go ahead. But finish I'm not, your I'm not no. going to. It's, it is not blindly given when you are a woman that has had to delve in that masculine energy. Correct. And in this world we live in now, mm -hmm you're either going to be overtly extra, sometimes X-rated feminine mm -hmm. to the point where it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. or you do have to play in those masculine spaces mm -hmm. in order to have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
And as a woman who, like I said, I've, I've been on both sides because I, I I'm in a relationship with a woman. I understand now that I, I still have my masculine energy. Mm-hmm. It's, it hasn't changed, but to your point where how the delivery of things changed, for, where a man would tell me, you just want to be the man. My girlfriend told me, you need to let go of the weight. Mm-hmm. Where a man mm-hmm. tells me, you just, you know what? Mm-hmm. You just thank you all that because you're making all this money. Stuff. Where the woman tells me, I understand what you have and what you've done, but that doesn't make me any less. Mm-hmm. So men as a whole need to learn how to get out of their feelings when it comes to these things and not mm-hmm. expect the woman to create the safe space for you to delve into maybe some of your feminine energy mm-hmm. as a man and let, let the reins down. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that you do the work first to create that safe space for yourself. And then when you are doing what you need to do for that woman, it's going to naturally occur because our feminine energy comes out naturally, but you have to make it come out. I'm going to come to you. I'm 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 going to come to you, then I'm going to come to you. But real quick, Mm -hmm. you contradicted yourself. Where? I I was listening. I'll go ahead. (laughs) Because you said that it is not the woman's responsibility to make the man feel like a man. It's not, correct? We agree. Mm -hmm. But then you went on to say that, and and you compared your girlfriend to Mm -hmm. men in the past and how she has taken on the responsibility to make you more comfortable to be more feminine. Mm -hmm. So you said, it's not your responsibility to make me feel like a man, Mm -hmm. but it's my responsibility to create an environment that's more comfortable for you to let your guard down and essentially be Be more feminine. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. a contradiction. Yeah. So when I say that it's not for myself to make you feel like a man, you mm-hmm. should feel like a man, mm-hmm. no matter what. So when the, the thing, cause, because again, in a relationship with a man, for me, I'm doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. But because I'm working late and I may not be able to make dinner, you're upset. This is my experience, mm-hmm. not everyone's, but my experience. Mm-hmm. You're upset about that. Or because I'm choosing to go out with my friends, some having to be male, it mm-hmm. makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So when I say that feel like a man, it's about like not the whole oh, let me make sure you feel like you're the head of this household, but more so, like, you're not making the money that I'm making, so mm-hmm. you feel bad about yourself. Mm-hmm. You're not where you want to be in life, so you feel bad about that. Mm-hmm. That's not my responsibility to okay. make you feel bad. That's what I mean in that. We'll, we'll come back. Let's it's, go to John. It's not that her girlfriend is making her, is taking on the responsibility. It's that she's aware of what's happening. That's yeah. a responsibility. So yeah, if a yeah. man said the same thing to her, mm-hmm. her femininity would still come out. It doesn't matter. It's not the person taking responsibility. It's that they are acknowledging that this is what they're seeing. Mm-hmm. And, so and, and they're validating her feelings. But that's work. That's work. Yeah. That's, there's well, you, a reason therapists get paid what they get paid. The Validation is work. But Acknowledgement is work. That's different than me making yeah. as You should know you're a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and you should know you're a woman. I, uh, 100% do. And I've, I've never given off anything less than mm-hmm. knowing that I'm a woman. All of, The point I'm making by comparing men I've dated to my girlfriend is the fact mm-hmm. that she, she, again, she knows she's a woman. Mm-hmm. She's not threatened by the fact that I have masculine energy mm-hmm. that I'm out here. Like I said, the whole working hard, working a lot, mm-hmm. being out, kind of controlling sometimes. <laughs> those things she recognizes as being part of who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that it, it makes me feel like, okay, when she says something that needs to be, that corrects me, it's not with that whole condescension going on mm-hmm. that a man can sometimes, because men, when they do that, they, try, they do it in a condescending manner. They make you feel bad for having to be being in this masculine energy you had to be into for a long time because it's what you've done instead of rather than trying to unpack it with you if they're not ready to be that man, quote yeah. unquote, I guess. Does that make sense? But I, I, think it, I, I think it speaks to the difference between men and women, right? There's an OG of mine. He said women struggle, men struggle with power as far as like the dynamic of feeling weak or feeling strong. That, that's our insecurity. Mm-hmm. Women struggle with shame, Right. And I think that I encourage men to be mindful of that when dealing with women. Just like you said, create an environment where she doesn't have to live in shame. However, it seems like women aren't willing to create an environment where I don't have to feel weak. 
That's a lot. Can I pause? Wait, can I really make my point? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, because I really want to just bring it back in and just say, like, honestly, from what you said, and you you talked about like delivery and how we say things, and she even mentioned it. I think sometimes what we fail to realize is that we really want the same thing. You just said if she can come with a loving and nurturing thing, like we can present your present your perspective, but it doesn't have to be condescending. And even when you were talking about with like, well, with men, they would say this versus my girlfriend says this. So it's like, to me, where we miss the point is that we all can just fix our delivery. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just not be condescending. Mm -hmm. Like, even in what you were saying, like, that's that's the thing. Like, what the struggle becomes is because of how we present it, how we say it, how a man says it to a woman, how a woman says it to a man. So I said, I, that's why I was just like, okay, like, I feel like we're making the same argument. 100%. But again from different perspectives right. and i think sometimes I, and, and that's where we like that's where we sort of kind of i, I think my, my biggest thing has been like we have to acknowledge that we're different oh definitely oh, well, right? and, and, and part of part of that difference is there are certain things that i have to have grace for mm -hmm. because you're a woman mm -hmm. there's a certain way just like you said with perspective there's mm -hmm. a certain way you're going to see shit and I have to be mindful of that, mm -hmm. and I have to be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. Similarly, mm -hmm. there are some unique sensitivities that the woman should have for the man. Oh, yeah. I, I what, 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 what I'm reporting, because this isn't necessarily my experience, but I interview a shit ton of men. Mm -hmm. I'm followed by a shit ton of men. And they're saying that while we are trying to work on having those unique sensitivities for the woman, mm -hmm. Women aren't even acknowledging that we have unique sensitivities. Can I pause? <laughs> hey, can I please? Can I need to get this out? Yes. Get it out. We talked on deliveries. Great. Mm -hmm. We got that out the way. What a man and a woman are completely different, right? Yeah. That should be celebrated. Great. But what we're failing to also mention, you mentioned that we want a woman that's loving and nurturing. You too can be loving and nurturing. Mm -hmm. So, are you tapping into your femininity? That's, that's what I'm we're, saying. Because we're, we're tapping into both. So, you're saying <laughs> of having the grace, the okay. thing is, the grace was already here for us. Mm -hmm. The grace, it seems, was not there for y'all, for women. Because if you're being inconsiderate of a woman's feelings and the things that she's going through in order to make you comfortable, mm -hmm. right? To what Portia said of, it's not my job to make you feel like a man. Where did you do your work for mm -hmm. yourselves? Maybe mama was not there to do that for you. Maybe dad was not. So where have you taken the responsibility and the accountability of yourselves where you have done that work for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're going to continue to project. And you're going to have these perceptions mm -hmm. of what we think when in reality, we're actually nourishing. We're going to nurture you, right? But if you don't even nurture yourself, how are you going to come to me for your nurturing? We're supposed to we, bring it off. We're supposed to bring it off for you, but you're not bringing it for yourself. And that's the fulfilling part right there as well, yeah. where you're doing your work in yourself. I and think I think the unique experience that I've had with interviewing men and women is I found that women on average, at least the women I've interviewed, mm -hmm. tend to have a cynical expectation of men and it's this it's this posture of you have to prove to me that you're good enough while simultaneously expecting that he assumes that you are good enough most women aren't coming to this proverbial table acknowledging their faults and saying this is what i need to work on most are coming saying that this is what you need to work on so even when a woman is encountered with a, a man who was raised by both parents. Mm -hmm. There's still an assumption that he has some emotional shortcoming mm -hmm. or he doesn't express himself properly. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, what happens, or at least what I've seen happen is, some women talk to men from a place of emotional or intellectual superiority, mm -hmm. and it sets that precedent, and that's what makes him defensive because now he feels like, oh, what be you're challenging you me. you're challenging me and you're expecting the worst out of me yeah. simply because what i'm black yeah. right and and that's been a lot of men's expectations so my only kind of argument has been if men are expected and and are being asked to have grace for women mm -hmm. and have 
and understanding, do our due diligence to understand all the intricacies of what the woman has been through, um, even her natural cycles and the whole nine and how that affects her disposition. Mm -hmm. There needs to be that work done from the female delegation for men. I'm hearing from men that that's not the case. Women are assuming that they've already done the work, but they're doing the work for them. And I think a perfect example of this, if, if I was to ask a group of women, um, you know, why are you or your female friends um, single? Most women would say, I don't know, right? Um, Stacy's a lawyer, Elizabeth is a doctor, um, uh, the other one owns a Mark business. A CEO. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And as a guy, what I understand is, oh, your friends are great men. Mm. Because you're evaluating them from a feminine curriculum for men and not acknowledging that the way that men are going to evaluate them, it's a different mm -hmm. set of rules. We don't give a shit that she makes six figures. What's mm -hmm. she look like? We don't give a shit that she's a doctor. Mm -hmm. What's she look like? What's her disposition? What is her skin like? And, and I think that's what gets lost in this, in this conversation because we're assuming that our curriculums are the same. Well, I was going to say that, too, say. because I feel like the most um, challenging part of this entire conversation for me is the rigidity in these roles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which everybody, can, everybody has their own preferences and how they approach relationships. I think it's natural for, to, to take a stance on that so that you can, be, you can bring your best representative when you are out in the world dating and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, like, it sounds hella ghetto <laughs> in the dating pool right now. And I, I feel for y'all. In saying that, I feel like the rigidity of these expectations, though, is really what the cause of all this, like, the, the cynicism and even the, um, what it sounds like is just, you know, men feeling very, or men feeling powerless to, this like men don't know how to bask in their feminine energy. Well, and that's, that's what I was saying. They don't we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I think I think if if I think that the we cannot today in 2023 have the same traditional mm -hmm. uh, values and and approaches to relationships as we have in the past because things are so different. Mm -hmm. And so to still come to the table with those traditional values, you're kind of already setting yourself up. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. I think that expecting those values from people who don't even present that is mm -hmm. also kind of like self-sabotage as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, when you, when you were talking about like the women in their, their jobs, I don't see that as masculine. I just see that as the way that they have expressed themselves in the mm -hmm. world to achieve what they wanted. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. think that's no, no. masculine. The, the, the point I was making wasn't necessarily saying that that's masculine. It was just a point of value system, right? Mm -hmm. So the things that those women assumed made them more valuable in the dating market actually doesn't move the needle for them at all. Sometimes it actually makes things more right. difficult. Mm -hmm. But that's, but that's, that's a problem. problem. That's, 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 that's the problem. problem. So so like you're, the saying, <laughs> you're saying that, saying, oh, because he's a doctor or a lawyer, those are like those masculine qualities or things that you're saying. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. So no, that's so not what, what I'm saying. saying. No, what I'm saying is... Unfortunately, I think a lot of times when we talk about um, entitlement, we talk about men, right? Mm -hmm. He expected me to give him some butt because he bought me some flowers, right? Okay. However, women also have a sense of entitlement. And some of that entitlement is, I am this caliber of woman. I ex I, I'm entitled to a good man. Mm -hmm. I have this type of position or education. I'm entitled to a good man. And what that stops them from doing is considering some of the personality or character flaws that they have, because they're just leading with, I'm this and I've achieved this, I graduated from Harvard, I did this and I did this. How don't I have a good man without acknowledging or even taking the time to identify the fact that you're terrible to be around. Mm. That's like you, you, you're not a that's you know like, you're not a good person. It's like taking a woman who's the CEO of a company but mm. won't date the janitor. Mm. But, but let's be for what, real. What's, what's so, the problem with what? But why? That, that's her preference, mm -hmm. and there's no problem in, with you, that. There's you no know, problem. but there's you no know problem. that's her. No. That's what she likes. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems like it's a lot of what you guys want is for women to be more sensitive to 
a man. No, in, in no, 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 no. What, what, what I would say is there's absolutely, just like the um, Ebony K. Williams thing, I don't expect her to date a bus driver. That doesn't make sense. What I'm saying, though, is if she then gets back on TV and says that, why am I not having luck with men? She has to look at herself. That's it. So my thing is, if you are a woman who's high achieving, high earning, the whole nine, should you date a man who's less than you, shorter than you, makes less money than you? Absolutely not. I, I believe everybody's entitled to their preference. However, sh do not expect to get what you feel like you're quote unquote owed. Because if you haven't done the work to even figure out what the thing that you want wants, if we want a certain job, right? I want to work for Google. I go on Google's website. I read the job description. I even try to see if I can set up coffee dates with people who work for Google so I can get a sense of what Google is looking for. Because I'm not entitled to a job at Google. Similarly, what I'm asking of our more successful sisters is, Take time to learn what that guy that you claim you're entitled to actually wants. Because you'll be surprised that the thing on your resume that you thought should have got you in the door, Google doesn't care about. And the thing that you might have been neglecting, the bit of experience or the bit of uh, the community service thing that you should have done, that's actually what would have got you the job. And I feel like that's the disconnect a lot of times between... Mm -hmm. But that's there's, excellent. There's a, but that can be called a men. That can go from men too. Absolutely, said, no that facts. Was an excellent explanation facts. of what is lacking. But if you took out women and put just mm -hmm. men in there, it is both genders Absolutely. that need to do that. And like I said, I just I feel like men want to mm -hmm. grab those men that are you know not at the CEO and the lawyer's level. They need to bring themselves down and understand that, okay, if this is not what's wanting to pursue me right now, mm -hmm. then I need to pursue elsewhere. And I need to stop expecting this woman to work on herself so she can be ready for me. Facts. I need to work on me mm -hmm. so that I can be, mm -hmm. I can be on her radar. Absolutely. She can see me. So it's like, excellent point, mm -hmm. but it that's goes a, both that's ways. For people. It's for, yeah, for women. It's for all of us. We need to do that. Let's go to her real quick. We're, we're, we're trained to look at it from that perspective. But well, when mm -hmm. you train to learn something, guess what? Yeah, you now can you're going to learn it. Get trained to learn but, something else. Correct. I, I, I get that. I get that. But what I'm saying is that if the world has a view that I, if I'm a CEO of a company, right, mm -hmm. and then a woman is attracted to me because I'm a CEO of a company, maybe she's a CEO, right? What I'm saying to you is no different from the celebrity realm. People date with inside of the, that, that particular realm, mm -hmm. right? So what I'm saying to you is that instead of dating on those particular realms, why not date based on who's the best outfit for you? Mm -hmm. The janitor could be the best outfit. Right. But in your mind, you're thinking that this is less valuable, but this could be the one for you versus, oh, I got to date Denzel Washington mm -hmm. because I'm Holly Berry. Right, 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 right. See what I'm saying? Right. Oh, yeah. So, the yeah. point that I'm making is you can see it fails over and over again. You got plenty of examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dating a celebrity doesn't guarantee the success of a, re a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't show. A, right. Dating yeah. somebody that has equal amount of value financially mm -hmm. doesn't equate to a successful mm -hmm. relationship. But it's at the top of people's priorities. It's at the top of people's mm -hmm. priority. But the thing is, that's people continually blinding themselves by that, that illusion. Mm -hmm. That's not a real reality. The reality yeah. is if you're looking for a love mate, then it should you be ready? looked at differently, you ready? right? Mm -hmm. It should be looked at differently, not just from the perspective of what do I have that I can give to someone else and what do they have that they can give me? Right. Because see, at the end of the day, it's about love, no matter how you break it down. Mm -hmm. Finances don't equate to love. So if you're dating based on what I have and what I can provide, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're setting yourself up for failure at the end of the day. But right. again, that's men. Oh, let's can go. Let, go let's back? go to Isa real yeah, quick. Right. She's been, oh, she been crazy. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. yeah, I really didn't have anything to say. I, just, I, I was just chuckling because, like, when you were talking about, um, like, okay, for men, like, y'all need to date to value, like, to value too. Like, if you work at McDonald's, like, okay, maybe y'all need to go for the CEO or the owner of your McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think of Kevin Samuels, God rest his soul, mm -hmm. and it makes me think of um, <laughs> these books. <laughs> I saw her face. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Oh, God. God. Like, no, but like, 
right, cause I'm, you know, the man, he passed away, so God rest his soul. But I'm just saying, like, to me, like, we were talking about earlier, like, these buzzwords, like, another buzzword is a high-value man or a high-value woman, like... Like I said, I really didn't have anything to chime in, but to me, just hearing, like, how you were talking, yeah. like, okay, Kevin Samuels would say, well, like, okay, well, you're a size 10, and you want a CEO, mm -hmm. and you think he's going to look at you? Well, so I think, like, I, I, I think wanna, a CEO would go for it. I, I, I don't care about those roles. I just think it's just, lesson right we quick. need to understand that it's not, there's nothing that's just fundamentally an issue with just this gender or just that gender. It's it's across the board. It's across that's, the board. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not true. Yeah, that's the thing. That's so that's what true. I, that's, well, I'll just I think, say. I think there's some overlap, but just like I said, just like we need different things, we have different problems. There are some problems that are unique to men. There are some problems that are unique to women. And all I'm asking for is like space for us as men to be able to air our grievances to y'all. Just no, like y'all have, have so space. Have you have it with the so right woman. The, with the right it. woman. No, I think no, that's it, the thing. I mean, I mean, right I mean on, the, on the macro, right? Because mm, okay. even in my experience doing what I do, mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of resistance. And I think mm. that resistance is based on women's um, idea that they are benevolent, right? Like most women say that they can be naturally uh, uh, feminine or submissive, and then they say, if, mm -hmm. dot, 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 yeah, dot, yeah. dot, which means yeah. condition, For sure. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. While expecting that on our first date, I'm opening the door for you. If some dude jump out with a gun, I'm jumping in front of it. So it's like my masculinity, <laughs> I said masculinity, it's my right. masculinity, mm -hmm. it should be initial, but yours should be conditional. I, and that's one I of think, the grievances men have. But can I just say, I mm -hmm. think that's just across the board. I think, honestly, I, to be very honest, I don't think anybody on earth like unfortunately i don't think we've sort of kind of grasped like unconditional or like conditional i that, and for me i'm speaking from like a spiritual perspective like i know i believe that god loves unconditionally like if he says and if it says in the word there's nothing that i can do that was is that it will separate me from god's love like that means there's nothing like even the worst thing that i did to myself that makes me unlove myself like to god that's nothing but to people like we don't do like we like oh man you made me mad like like it doesn't mean I'm, I might not love you any less, but, but it's I'm like you, you well. right? Like you made me mad, so I think that's just like a human thing. Like mm -hmm. we hold ourselves like we are bound to condition. I just yes. like like. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing either. I, I don't mean either. I don't. Think, I don't so either. I'm not saying it's a I bad thing, but I'm just saying like I like again. I feel like we're sometimes we make the same argument. Like, I, but we be saying the same thing. I, I, I'll I say know. one of one of the I unique that. things that men are concerned about and put it that way because men w weren't the ones begging for women to become masculine mm -hmm. women becoming masculine is a consequence of men's failings mm -hmm. you know women's circumstances but mm -hmm. men weren't asking for women to become masculine mm -hmm. with that being said women now to your point are asking for men to become more soft and feminine and as you put it in touch with our feminine okay. sides it's, let me right. can, I, can I say let me something? Finish, let me finish. When you when you done, of course. I'm sorry. So with with that being I'm said, sorry. I think one of the um, difficulties, like if I'm thinking as a younger dude, like mm -hmm. for instance, I, I use this uh, analogy. Do any of y'all play guitar? No. Have you ever played guitar before? No. Attempted. I picked it up. Okay. <laughs> one of the tough things about playing guitar is that it'll hurt the shit out of your fingertips. Oh, yeah. You have to build calluses over time mm -hmm. to be able to play guitar. Mm -hmm. So with what that being said. Pick? or use a pick, but if you really want to get good, you got to, you know, use your fingers. And with that being said, over time, your fingertips will become rough as hell. Mm -hmm. What's tough is women, this, again, this is a metaphor. Women are asking us to learn how to play guitar, mm -hmm. but maintain soft hands. Yeah. No. And that's, why do you say no? No, because you picked up the guitar. Mm -hmm. who, who told you to pick up that guitar? Made selection. Who? Mate selection, because we knew that playing guitar, again, using the metaphor of playing guitar, can uh -huh. differentiate us from other men and uh -huh. give us a higher likelihood to seduce women. So it's so, men that did this to each other. We're, we're doing this led by, we're peacocking, right? We're trying to mate. Uh -huh. And we, we understand that what is going to help us become more successful at mating are things like 
size, attractiveness, status, money, the whole nine. So we go for those things, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, guitar analogy is just saying that if I know how to play guitar and mm -hmm. Steve doesn't, mm -hmm. and we both have the same uh, level of riz, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull more than he does. Mm -hmm. But one of the consequences of me knowing how to play guitar is my uh, fingertips are going to be callous. Let me, let me take it to the animal kingdom. Cycle. Let me take it to the animal kingdom. So like bucks, right? Bucks, usually die male, male uh, deer or whatever, bucks, they die from arthritis. Why do they die from arthritis? Because they have big, massive horns. Mm -hmm. Guess what female doe select for? The man with the biggest horns is going to mate first. Mm -hmm. If our biological code is to mate, and we grow the biggest, most elaborate horn that we can grow in order to mate, but that thing is simultaneously killing yeah. us, that is the dilemma of a man. So in that uh, example, it's the horns, but there are other things in, in our communities, whether it's you know, the, the, the gangster dude or the athlete or whatever the case may be. And I'm just saying it would help if women considered the role that they play in some of the things we do to seek your affection. So what are, we, what are we supposed to do though? Give them to the be, grace that they want. Grace, that's it. Oh, okay, but do y'all That's like it, because, because what tends to happen is Women, and going back to the guitar analogy, you're complaining that my fingertips are rough without acknowledging the fact that I learned how to play for you. Now, can I ask what you a question? Put that do down. down. Now, yeah, like, do that? In, this, in this case, did the woman asked, like, this the is, woman that you were interested in, mm -hmm. she said, like, you, you went up to her and said, hey, mm -hmm. what, what do I have to do to get with you? And she mm -hmm. said, you got to play the guitar. No, again, and then you pick up the guitar. Again, I'm, I'm, ta guitar. I'm talking about on the macro. Okay, because so I'm, I'm, I'm using guitar as as a metaphor but this could go for um you know some dudes in the hood they no, turn to crime uh getting money the whole nine those are different quote-unquote guitars and are women walking up to individual men and saying that you need to learn how to do this no however when we look at the men that are getting selected it is the taller guy who? Like, by women, okay. the majority of women. No, you guys create it's this the guy comparison. with money in the whole room. You are pitting you. yourself up against these other men. Thank you are thinking Absolutely. for women. It's a cycle. That is, you cannot expect a woman to mm. give you grace for a situation you created with other Thank men. You. And also, go, that grace part, well, you, you say men give women grace that women don't give to them. Mm. Women have had how many years of having to be graceful? Mm -hmm. And the moment we step into our own and we start to realize that mm -hmm. we can exist in the masculine and feminine energy together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. men are all of a sudden, well, notice me, see me for who I am, but mm -hmm. let me be. You, you see what I'm saying? So, it's, but, it's like that. Hold, but, on, hold on. It's, yeah, it's, it's like you, you, want us, you want us to mm -hmm. fix ourselves. Make sure that we're giving, we're, we're, we're not giving off masculine energy. Make mm -hmm. sure we're, we're being this feminine woman for you. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that we see the table as this construct of us working together. Mm -hmm. But also in all those things, mm -hmm. make sure if the man don't have this, 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 and this, mm -hmm. that you've set forth these standards on by other men, not women, by other men. Mm -hmm. And in your back of your mind, it's because you think that women want this, but you're really doing it because it's what you think women need. Right. Then mm -hmm. if you don't have those things, that woman also has to give you grace on top of everything else. Correct. Right. Right. Did anybody ask? Here's the thing, Here's the thing. Like, I remember there was a Bill, you know Bill Burr, the stand-up comedian? No, no. Yeah, well, he's he's his white dude. He's funny as shit. But he did, yeah, yeah. He did a set talking about um, how white women are now social justice warriors, and he basically talked about how <laughs> he basically talked about how like during people's oppression, y'all were our sidekicks, mm -hmm. and now you're taking the posture of being the oppressed, even though you were the oppressor. It wasn't as overt as the white man, but you. You, you, he said you stepped your Gucci booted uh, boots over the oppression line and you want to now claim victim. And I say that to say, we entered this conversation kind of assuming that the grace was one-sided. So grandpa didn't give grandma any kind of grace. Um, grandpa- but he was out here running the streets. But, but see, again, 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 this is, th these assumptions are fundamentally flawed because sometimes when grandpa came back from Vietnam, or he came back from, from Germany, he came back to find somebody else's kid. 
and he raised that kid. He but we don't talk dream. about he that. He had some, he he some but, 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 My uncle did it. Say, but, this for real. Uh, but she, she uh, but, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My point, my point is this. My point is this. When we talk about grace, we talk about it from the perspective of assuming that one party was benevolent, a.k.a. grandma, and one party was vindictive, a.k.a. grandpa. So even in the scenario I just gave you where grandpa had to raise some other man's child, you will come up with another scenario as to why maybe he had another family. Maybe, he, But when it's the other way around, we don't, we are not, we, we don't default to coming up with other assumptions. Like, for instance, um, grandpa beat grandma's ass. We don't say, well, grandma was probably fucking the milkman. We don't say you stuff don't? like that. No. Mm -hmm. On the macro, that's not how those conversations are had. But whenever it's time to acknowledge the ways that men are hurt, we have to rationalize. And it's not even a black thing. I think generally, we don't know how to view men as victims. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to view women as perpetrators. So we will justify it in our mind as to why this man deserved X, Y, and Z, or why he was morally unjust and he had it coming or whatever the case may be. But generally, we don't do that to women. All I'm asking is, if we're going to expect men to be, uh, to have softer hands, to my analogy, and to have more grace in the whole nine, we have to, first of all, acknowledge the reasons why, whether overtly or covertly, women have also participated in the things that made our hands rough. Now, whether women asked us to go to war or whether women enjoyed the peace that was created from us dying, it's part of it, right? And all I'm saying is, instead of this culture of, well, men need to be more, 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 and more, we need to take a beat to acknowledge all the things that men, for better or worse, had to become for you. What's crazy I is how stop women you. are always on that, what, that, what we need men now. to do and what we need men to be. We do mm -hmm. harp a lot, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But also, during this entire conversation, you, you, the men have told women what we need to do based on the larger grand scale. Mm -hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, the ones sitting at this table mm -hmm. don't share those grandiose ideas. Those mm -hmm. are the everybody else has. So mm -hmm. is it really, really on the grand scheme that everybody thinks like this? Or are we looking at what social media is putting out there or just who you've come in contact with? Oh, no, I was just answering your question. Small mindedness. But no, I, I was answering the question of how can men become more in touch with the feminine side? Grace. How can men feel more comfortable not necessarily uh, resting our value on how much we make or how tall we are and all that stuff? Grace. Because the reality is, and this is part of what's not discussed, a lot of young boys, part of the reason why they grow up to be future and, and pimps and the whole nine is because when they were growing up, they were gaslit. Mm -hmm. They were told that you buy a girl flowers and you nice to her and all this stuff and she's going to fall in love with you. The reality is not that clean. But that's not our fault. That's I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's your fault. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that you had a role in it. So, yes, it's the fact that their father wasn't there. He was a Debbie, whatever the case may be. But a lot of these things were told by the mom. And the mom was preparing him to be a great man for a 30, 40-year-old woman mm -hmm. without acknowledging what he's going to see mm -hmm. at 16, at 20. And that's all I'm saying. So when, when this guy grows up and he's resentful of mm -hmm. the gaslighting and the doublespeak that, he, that he's heard from women, it's valid. It's, and and it's, he needs to be understood. Like, like you heard the, the, the toy scenario. Mm -hmm. where women, the way they grew up, their toys were totally different from the men's toys. Mm -hmm. Like the men's toys, we played, with, we played with Tonka trucks. We was always prepared to be in the workforce, to be the providers. The women always played with the Barbie dolls. So they had this illusion of Ken and Barbie. This was a reality for women when they were growing up because they were taught to be able to look at men this way, mm -hmm. right? So find you a Ken, right? That was the conversation in every household. Not mine. Can we be right? mine either? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, like, it's, like, it's like where we're, the generalization is coming macro, from. Macro, macro. We're talking about on a grand scale, mm -hmm. on a grand scale, because if you look at the, the reality, right, the re just got to look at the reality. We're not talking about the small, minute realities. We're talking about the grand reality. If you look at every conversation a woman is having, she's going to choose her mate by what? His status. So wow. what Obi was saying is 
if you, if you look in the animal kingdom, this is nature. This has nothing to do with, like, go back to the macro, mm -hmm. right? If you go back to the macro... Who, I, I want to hear what you had to say. Right? So you go back yeah. to the macro, let's just take lioness mm -hmm. and lions. Mm -hmm. What do lioness do? They hunt. For who? Their families. Who, no. Their children. Who's eating first? The man. But the it's the woman is, hunting for the man, yes. right? She's hunting for the man. So how are we comparing? Okay, so I'm look, look, look what I'm saying. I'm she's finish. hunting for the man. That okay. means the man, he will help depending on the, the size of the, you know, the, yeah. that needs to be taken down. Uh -huh. But the reality is if there's a group of lioness, three, four, to maybe one, maybe one male, maybe three males, mm -hmm. Right. If the woman is going out and they're staking out dinner for the male and mm -hmm. then they allow the man to eat before they even eat, mm -hmm. that's nature. That's law. Right. So if we look at that in every kingdom. But why, though? Right. I, why? Why? No, I, 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 I want her to answer. I want her. Okay. To, I wanted to see mm -hmm. if you look at this mm -hmm. clearly mm -hmm. without feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. Right. Not based on what you was taught and I was taught. And we look at law and how things operate. Mm -hmm. then why do those things not fall in place when it comes down to man and woman in today's society? Logic and so reason. We're talking about we have logic and reason. Mm -hmm. we're, so not, logic we're not animals. We have logic and reason. No. The ja jazz. What you got? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, jazz. You, you, said, let me say, you said logic and reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Logic and reason was taught. That's not divine nature. Right, but, but, so but logic, and, logic, logic and reason can only come from curriculum. That has nothing to do with nature. So what I'm saying to you is, let me, if I walk you to the end of a mountain, do you have to have logic and reason not to jump off of it? Yeah. Instinct. It's instinct. So it's totally different. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be taught that. Yeah, our genitals don't have logic and reason. We don't have logic and reason. So what I'm saying to you is, we are taught to think and perform certain ways so we're taught to think and perform certain ways like male and woman characteristics mm -hmm. right we're having a conversation about around women and men characteristics you operate a certain way i operate a certain way right that's based on curriculum we're having debates and discussions based on curriculum what does your divinity say what does your divine nature say you're supposed to be like when you meet a man so why I know you want to speak. Go ahead. I've been yeah, with y'all yeah. and letting y'all speak as men ahead, and get yeah. your points out. Mm -hmm. When we talk about leaders, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. A leader is not just somebody that's leading, but somebody that can also take the back seat mm -hmm. and learn. For sure. That's a leader. Mm -hmm. So, to go on the point of when you were talking about how we've been conditioned to grow up, right? Like girls with the Barbies, blah, 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 blah. even in that, mm -hmm. women have been helping with sustaining the cycle of making a man the leader. Okay. Yes. So with giving you guys the hand up of being that leader, that mm -hmm. has trickled down into different consequences. Mm -hmm which is a reflection of you mm -hmm. as leaders. Mm -hmm. So I guarantee if you were leaders that were saying, I'm going to work and I'm going to make this money. And then if your partner too is making that money mm -hmm. as well, and you don't see her as a threat, but you see her as, I'm not going to say equal because we're different in our own ways. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you saw it in that way, rather than her being competitive to you, and therefore you say, in order to make me feel powerful, you just got to be pretty, you got to be nice, you got to talk to me a certain way, then, you know, that's what works for you as a man. But if you would see it as where you guys can collaborate and help one another, things will look so different. Because then you're understanding from each other you're able to acknowledge this is who you are as a woman. This is what you can bring to the table. Mm -hmm. This is who I am as a man, and this is what I can bring to the table where you can have productive conversations as to what each other really needs and what they want, not based on what the society tells you what you should be and how you have to be. Mm -hmm. So a cycle has been created, which has created all this rigidness of now expecting a woman to make up for that rigidness that leaders mm -hmm. that are male leaders have created in this world. Mm -hmm. When it comes to 
when we talk about, and I'm bringing this all together, mm -hmm. when we talk about our grandparents that were together and they had to be together, that's because there were men that did not believe that women should be on their own, they shouldn't be making money, and that they should rely on a man to do so. But now when she gets money, or now there's that woman that came out of that situation where she was shamed mm -hmm. for making more money or being able to do what a man does, when she has taught another woman, get your money, oh, and she's going for a man that's got the money, now she's a gold digger. Now she's all these different things. Mm -hmm. That was all a projection and a cycle that was created by male leaders that wanted to feel powerful. Not, it could have been, I'm powerful and you're powerful. How can we be powerful together and make this work? But we have to fix it. And now we have, we to, have to fix it and give mm -hmm. grace. No, but no, no, the no. reality I'm, I'm, is, I'm, is we've been giving grace this whole time. It's just you don't yeah. recognize it because you're not tapping in a certain part of yourself. You're not allowing yourself to tap into a certain part of yourself, which is the femininity side and saying, mm -hmm. dang, you know what? This is really hard. Let me uh, let me share this with my lady or a woman that's going to be able to listen to me and talk with me through these things. Because if she's a real woman, she's going to walk you through it. She's going to help you through that where you don't have to feel like that anymore. But because you're a man and you want to mm -hmm. feel powerful and you don't feel like you're good enough, you keep putting this pressure on yourself and I you think, don't have to do that. I think what's difficult, though, is like just like I gave the example with the white women, women have helped establish mm -hmm. and maintain patriarchy as well. 100%. Mm -hmm. And we don't acknowledge that, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important is a lot of times we talk about these things as men created it, so men need to fix it, and then let, let us know, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to acknowledging the ways that we as women have also created and maintained this as well, and how we as women, our preferences, mm -hmm. our patterns incentivize the very behavior from men that we claim to not want to see any more of. Mm -hmm. it, there's a reason why some of the worst men you'll meet were raised by women. Mm -hmm. Like we have to acknowledge the, 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 the symbiotic relationship. And the only thing mm -hmm. I'm saying is like, going back to the whole nature argument, mm -hmm. the reason in nature that the male eats first is because whether you look at the uh, lions, whether you look at primates, the male is tasked with protection. So the reason you feed the male first, it seems like, oh, submission the whole nine, is no, so he'll have energy in case another lion comes and tries to kill us and eat our shit. Mm -hmm. Especially with lions, because lions fight to the death. They fight to the so shit. there's a utility. Even when you look at wolves, right? When a male wolf is challenging another male wolf, the female wolf kind of snuggles under him. And people look at her, oh, she's weak and she's docile. No, she's protecting his neck. There is utility to these positions. Mm -hmm. Men and women are not equal in position, but they're equal in value. Yeah. And they're the point, what? value. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the point that I've been making is, number one, women, can you please acknowledge the part that you played in us becoming this? And also acknowledge the part that you're going to have to play for us to be different. Exactly. That's it. Outside of that. That is it. What, like if you want to see more, more mm. effeminate men, if you want to see softer men, if you want to see more uh, uh, intentional men and deliberate men, what needs to happen, instead of all the time, energy, and effort women use to complain about the men who aren't these things, but mm -hmm. they're still sleeping with them. Those sure. are the men that still make them moist. Yeah. Those are the men they're going on dates with. Mm -hmm. Instead of that, maybe, just like with nature, survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. women dictate who gets replicated. For That's sure. part of y'all's strength. If, if, if the female delegation said, we don't want to see no more dark skin, motherfuckers. Yeah. In a couple of generations, there will be no more dark skin people. That's not true. That's not true. Yes, it is. That's not true. I'm, okay. using, That's not true. I'm using that as an example. But I'm, I'm using that as an example because, I, I mean, skin I is different. But my point is the female delegation of any species is tasked with choosing who gets to mate. Oh, to and it. who gets to mate gets to <laughs> replicate. But what is, the, what is the curriculum that she's following because if males are the leaders, you guys are saying, this is what we've created. Mm -hmm. So choose from it. Then no, we're going to no, say, no, no. oh, okay. Like, but but again, she... that, that, that goes back to my point. Leadership is not just... Uh, 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 um, one-sided. It's not, not one-sided. One and, and that's my... Because at the end of the day, it's like, 
when we bl blame the president, for instance, mm -hmm. or the president did this and did that. No, we have to look at the Senate. We have to look at the uh, House. Of, we have to look at the voters. Mm -hmm. So similarly, even though men, because we're the leaders, have to own the blame, mm -hmm. women have to acknowledge the part that they play. So even with a small example of, I want to see more emotionally intelligent men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very simple. Mm -hmm. Once emotionally unintelligent men stop getting pussy, there will be no more emotionally unintelligent men. So we, that's we power that fix. women have. So we gotta fix. No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying you have to fix it. I have to. I'm saying you have to stop incentivizing it. Sorry. Because just like is, we're leaders, we follow y'all leadership in in, in different the thing dynamics is that you guys as well. Have the power to change it, but don't do it. That's the thing. When you look at society, you look at how the world is going and the world operates. Every man in this world, you could probably see, why does he choose his path for success? Every man has to choose what type of business he's going to go in, what type of job he's going to have, mm -hmm. because he has to be attractive. Attractive to a mate. So I guess I don't hang with the men that so, feel this way. I just, so I'm, I'm learning my, so I'm much making, at this, this conversation yeah, right here I, that I, I did not I know about women. women. Yeah, yeah I didn't know because about men. I can say that so. I personally met a guy mm -hmm who said, and it's not verbatim, but he was like, based on my fight, he's like, I wanted to find a woman that made me look good. Absolutely. Because I was not confident enough in my financial status, so I thought that she would make me look better. No, that's bullshit. <laughs> no, did you meet but, his dad? I mean, that's what he said did, to Did me. you meet his dad? Huh? Did you meet his dad? No. That's why. Because he, he wasn't raised by any male no. leadership to say some bullshit like that. <laughs> <laughs> but no. the thing is, like, that's, that's the kind of energy that men are putting out here. Yeah. Because that they're being cool. raised by y'all. Yeah. That's my point. <laughs> but, but they have, so, so at the end of the day, it's still a matter of, yes, we, we women have to acknowledge that we accept and put up with things that cultivate and like re-energize these men that quote-unquote ain't shit. Mm -hmm. But we're all adults. Men have to grow up for themselves. They have to yeah. do the individual work. But we don't. For we don't do that independent. No, and and this is, yeah. as you know, as as somebody who was born in Africa, this is what breaks my heart about mm -hmm. some of the disconnection. Mm -hmm. So I'm Igbo, mm -hmm. and you know, in Igbo culture, we have different kind of delegations. So we have the chiefs, the older men who you know run shit. Um, we have the king and the queen, obviously. But we also have the warriors. That's the youth, the young men. They're the you know. Shaka Zulu motherfuckers. And then we have a group called Umwada. Umwada translates to first daughters. It's a delegation of women. Okay. Now, on the face, people would assume, oh, the chiefs make all the rules or the warriors make all the rules because they can fight in the whole nine. But actually, the most powerful group in this, let's say you're running for uh, public office or you're trying to get influence, the first place you have to go is it's the women. The women. Oh, Why is that? That's right. Because the women control the chiefs yep. and the warriors. Because if they say, y'all not eating this week, That's what's right. going to happen? Mm. Or if the chiefs, if the chiefs own some bullshit and, and they weaponize the warriors, their sons. Mm -hmm. So again, women's strength is not in their overt domination. Women's strength is in their influence. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in the, in, the, in the context of this country, women have gone away from that. Mm -hmm. from the influence, from the seduction, and are now trying to assume a more domineering, masculine, I'm going to force you role. And because of that, you're not acknowledging the fact that you still have the power of influence. Mm -hmm. You're just not, you're either not using it or you're not using it properly. So when we're saying, okay, y'all claim you want to see this type of man, you want to see men do more of this, well, it's easy. Those men need to be the ones who are mating, and therefore you will replicate those men. Because at the end of the day, the man you sleep with and have his kid, you're cloning him. Mm -hmm. it wasn't so if until women, you, yeah, it wasn't until you brought the conversation I back. That. I feel that okay to that point that. that I really understood where you're coming from. And to me, it boils down to yeah. men and women. But in, in this particular uh, conversation, men want to be seen and heard, not just for what you can contribute, but like who you are as individuals and yes. people. And you would like men to be seen and heard in the sense that you want women to own more, take more ownership 
of our power and mm -hmm. how our influence it has affected us as a society. Absolutely. And just like the mm -hmm. buck analogy that I gave, the gaslighting comes in of women saying that, oh, no, little horn bucks mate too. And the reality is, no, they don't. So the fact that I have arthritis because I had to grow my horns as big as possible to get you without you acknowledging the fact that you selected me because I had the biggest horns, let's be real, is, 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 <laughs> it's immoral, low key. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you're, you're, you're acknowledging all the issues that come along with the disposition I've had to gain without acknowledging the fact that you selected me specifically for this. And it's this idea that good doesn't come with bad. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, there's no trade off, mm -hmm. right? I want a man who's running a multi-million dollar company, but I also want him to be at every piano recital. Exactly. And it's like dudes feel like they time. can't win for losing. Yeah. And I know some women are reasonable enough to understand that that's illogical, mm -hmm. but the majority that we see are complaining about exactly who they selected us for being. Mm -hmm. Sure. Do men go for those majority of women though? Like, is that is that the type of mate you mm -hmm. want to? Well, see, the okay. thing the thing though is like when it comes to um, mate selection, even even in an African context, <laughs> you evaluate your status as a man based on the number of women that are attracted to you. Mm. As a quality? woman, as a woman, see, this is what this that projection. Okay. Women's status is evaluated by the quality of man okay. that is attracted. And this is why. Any kingdom you look at, mm. what's the name of the, um, the king's wife? Mm, the queen. queen. queen? Oh, yeah. I thought this is a trick question. Okay. <laughs> what's, 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 what's the name of the queen's husband? King. No, Charles. Oh. Queens don't make kings. Kings make queens. Mm, gotcha. Now, maybe that changes at some point. But the reality of it is, the reality we have to deal with is, yes, women's influence is different than men's influence. Women's power is different than men's power. But you made us like this. Mm -hmm. Even in a white supremacist context, we can go in a different direction. That, you made us like that's, this. That's very triggering. That is. I don't like that. that. I don't like it Because there's no accountability there. No, yeah. mm -hmm. There's no accountability. We live in a system of patriarchy. We have, like, this, this country was founded on patriarchy, mm -hmm. on the male domination, the man asserting his masculineness on us mm -hmm. and we had to adjust to that mm -hmm. and then there was a period of adapting mm -hmm. where it got kind of convoluted and so that's where you're getting into the point of where okay now it's us that made you like this no for the, all these years patriarch patriarchy women are now coming into their own and trying to figure out how to dissolve mm -hmm. these years of having to be mm -hmm. holy subservient, then mm -hmm. going into being wholly masculine. And mm -hmm. so those are now, white women. Mm -hmm. Those are white women. White women. The, the, the subservient, holy, those are white women. Okay, black women you, have never been subservient to us. No. Okay, so, we just, so we're not general, not macro anymore, we're just on black people no, again? Well, so the reason I want to bring this conversation to black people is mm -hmm. because when we talk about patriarchy, number one, we do not acknowledge the part that women play in patriarchy mm -hmm. in maintaining and upholding it and how women benefit from patriarchy, particularly in a racist context. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, and especially I think with and our community, when we, when we think of yeah. toxic masculinity, we think of a black man, mm -hmm. even as black folks. I don't, I don't think that, I don't, I don't. I don't. I think what I see is that black people as a whole were divided mm -hmm. and every, and each person has had, or male or woman had their traumas, their separate traumas. Mm -hmm. The woman having to take care of the household the white man seeing the black man as a threat, mm -hmm. so therefore he put him through hell. Mm -hmm. That in, it, mm -hmm. in itself created this huge gap in between the two. Mm -hmm. So I don't think of male masculine toxic. Uh, so you're talking about divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but then if if that's the case, why didn't you say that when you were talking about men fixing patriarchy? You, we, we talked about it in a way where it's, it's our responsibility to fix it mm -hmm. without acknowledging that we're victims of it as well, particularly black men. Yeah, absolutely. but the, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Sure. We agree on the whole we're all victims part. It's mm -hmm. just the, I think the stance that we're, I, I think I'm uncomfortable with mm -hmm. is that it's saying that men give women grace and women don't give men grace mm -hmm. because you're speaking from, like you said, your male perspective mm -hmm. and you don't know what grace looks like for us mm -hmm. giving to a man. Mm -hmm. So maybe that man that we're having that child with mm -hmm. 
has we, we've given the grace too. That's and not they grace. were and they were. Given, I think no, 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 no. Been too much hold on, hold on, hold on, because we were we were in a position to where we thought, like I said, for me, like I dated the one that I I saw mm -hmm. what they could become. They they had less than me, mm -hmm. but I still was with them, wholly mm -hmm. invested in That's my life. That's not that's not so, great. But, but I'm, I'm working with you. I'm mm -hmm. not looking at you as you have to be the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at you as you have to be this whole beat up people man. Because mm -hmm. I, I like a teddy bear. I don't want nobody that's out here beating people up. So right. I'm giving you these. I'm making sure that you understand that you don't have to be this old gung ho. I'm doing this thing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm having to, I guess, feed your ego. Like, I don't, I just don't understand how women mm -hmm. are tasked with being the ones to fix all these things and adjust us and acknowledge all these things. Mm -hmm. But we're acting like women don't mm -hmm. give that grace. We but, don't acknowledge, we don't we see it. Do. Well, we just, maybe sometimes I, it gets convoluted. We get and lost that, in that, it. That's the point. That's the, okay, because that my, my, my main point is like, mm -hmm. I don't think women are not giving grace. I don't, I, I think women are giving the incorrect type of grace. Oh, so oh, what, so, so tell can us you how go into what type right. of grace that okay. is that you want? Okay, okay. So that would be productive, I think. That's fantastic. <laughs> so number one, Women should stop dating for potential and instead start dating for projection. There is a narcissistic element of dating with potential. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you are assuming that you have the power mm -hmm. in your vagina or in your spirit to mm -hmm. transform a man mm -hmm. from a dog to a teddy bear. That's delusion, too. That is, that is absolutely is delusion. And, and some of it delusion. comes from the trauma. Mm -hmm. Right, because mm -hmm. when you are traumatized, sometimes you escape to La La Land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of our women escape to La La Land, and that's why they date for potential versus mm -hmm. projection. Now, if women started dating for projection mm -hmm. and understood that, oh, he's not a software designer yet, mm -hmm. but he spends 50 hours a week on the computer mm -hmm. trying to figure out code in the whole night. He's going to be there one day. Mm -hmm. I just need to do this, or I need to do this, and I need to do this, and I need to believe in his vision mm -hmm. and get out of his way, right? But what tends to happen is some women continue to date for potential, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And because of you're living in that fantasy of who you think he can be and that delusion of who you think you could be, he's your son for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. And you talk to him like that, and you treat him like that, and there is a, there is a power dynamic that you're comfortable with. And mm -hmm. sometimes you take that established dynamic to a man with projection. Mm -hmm. And now everything he says, you sure about that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or you, you revert to the, the tone that you're talking about. Because you have lost the ability to dis discern a man who actually wants it for himself versus a man who wants it for you. Mm -hmm. Because a man who wants it for you is your son. And I think that that level of great, and then believing a man with projection over time, number one, the men with potential will stop mating mm -hmm. because they won't get any women because all the women are with the dudes with uh, projection. projection. And the women are going to believe those dudes and talk to them like he's already president. Mm -hmm. He's already the CEO. He's already this, as opposed to projecting what you think he can mm -hmm. be. And over time, again, I'm not saying something that's going to happen open, overnight, over time, we're going to see better men. We're also going to see better women because the women sure. now are going to be able to rest in their belief and their respect of this man who's just, he's a CEO in training. He's a, he's a boss in training. He's a president in training. But what we see happen, though, is more of that energy is being put into transforming men who are nowhere near. They don't even have the desire for themselves. Mm. So all I'm saying is women are powerful as shit. For sure. But I think some women have lost sight of what your power is and how it's best applied. Mm. That's it. I'm going to be a devil's advocate so because what about it? those men you invest in, mm -hmm. you spend years with, and then when they have their final moment and they come up, mm -hmm. they leave you. Is this waiting to exhale? Waiting because to exhale right baby, here. That's what that, she is in my head Listen, burning that car a, right put now. Put a pin in that. that put a pin in that. That's going to be episode two. That's going to be episode two. Remember that. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Round of applause for y'all, man. This is... This is fantastic. I'm going to go around. Everybody have final words. Um, so I'm going to start with you. We're going to go that way. Any final thoughts? No, start with me. Okay, start with you. Go this way. You got time now. You better come up with something um, good. Final thoughts. I appreciate the discussion that was had here. I think you all are highly intelligent, mm -hmm. thorough people. Um, I appreciate the perspectives 
definitely the male perspective that came in here today. Um, we held it down too, just two of us. Okay, you ain't, oh, this is my moment. You ain't, see, that's I'm, what I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's what happens. You try to give them their praise no, and their grace, and then they have to give it themselves. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so on that note, I'll say this was wonderful. I can't wait till next time. Hmm? Huh? That's a beautiful thing. You can just help him exercise his vulnerability. And you see how you twist it back and see what you want it to be? <laughs> we can't win for losing, man. We can't win for losing. Okay. Okay. See, oh, mm, I'm, just I'm humbled by you. <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful. Black yes. words. <laughs> no, so like I said earlier, I learned a lot tonight. Yes. Um, I think, you know, also, me being in my bubble of, like, my own marriage and not really looking outside of, like, what I experience on a day-to-day, -day, um, I think has... Um, I don't know, maybe shelter me from a, shelter <laughs> shelter me from a lot of stuff. Safe. Kept me safe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. thank God, I thank God yeah. that I'm, I'm she gonna love on her husband too. That you take it. You take it. But, also, but <laughs> also, like, it's also kind of disheartening. Like, yeah. people are really, yeah, people go through this, mm -hmm. but also, like, there's no, there's no clear resolution in sight, which is why we're having this conversation to mm -hmm. begin with. Um, but I also, I go back to like, we all just want to be seen and heard y'all. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's a little girl and a little boy in each of us that has, you know, that's still like yearning for, for mm -hmm. that in different ways. And it kind of, um, manifests in these relationships. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, everybody, everybody's human and we all bring our own baggage to whatever table we're coming to. Um, and I, it's just my hope and my prayer that. Um, as we evolve and as we continue to have these conversations that we do so in a manner of just a willingness to be open, mm -hmm. to be vulnerable, but mm -hmm. also to, you know, stand firm on like what our true values are. Mm -hmm. Because to me, if I say here, here is, here is me, here I am, and here's what I want. And I'm just clear on that. And I communicate that without any mask, without any like, you know, hidden agendas or anything. I believe that what I what I put out is what I, I'm going to attract too. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, well, I would say um, for me it was beautiful to have the conversation mm -hmm. with the ladies and my brother mm -hmm. over here. I would say that vulnerability is a mm -hmm. superpower mm -hmm. based on it doesn't it doesn't matter based on a role. You know whether it's coming from a man or a woman. If we're able to have these conversations, uh, we can have impact you know, across the board because that's what we want to do. We want to be able to help influence other people who are going through some of these situations that we're going through and experiencing right. some of the things that we're experiencing. And we want to get the world, the people that's going to watch the podcast, a different trajectory, mm -hmm. you know, on how men and women can actually have a conversation uh, about vulnerability uh, and subjecting ourselves to hearing one another versus just hearing ourselves. Because a lot of times we can get lost in a conversation when we only hear in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when we're willing to listen to what other people are saying, because like you said, everybody comes with trauma, different mm -hmm. life experiences. But if we're able to just be comfortable enough to be able to allow the women and men to communicate with each other in vulnerability, I feel like we can have a great impact. Absolutely. Jasmine? <laughs> y'all know I'm uh, as y'all have seen today I'm very passionate about this mm. stuff but with that it's because I do believe in the beauty of both male and uh, female mm. and with that is being able to have these conversations to put it on the table to be transparent to be vulnerable I also want to say for men because I know how I can come off my delivery still working on it you guys but this is to say that it's just all to help somebody to be a better person, mm -hmm. to be more self-aware of who they are and the people that they are around, mm -hmm. but then to also know that you're worthy mm -hmm. and that you mm -hmm. are enough as well, um, to not forget that part. The, you know, if I come off certain ways, it's because it's like, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. You can do better. Hey, all the fellas is watching. I better get jazzed. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be in there. And, and it's women there. and women and men, whatever, whatever you prefer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, the you are there is someone there to love you, mm -hmm. 
for who you are as a person. Mm. It doesn't mean you can be any kind of way now, okay? Mm. You got to do the work for yourself. You got to you got to do that. Mm. And that's tapping into places that also makes you uncomfortable. Mm. And that's okay. But, you know, again, I hope that this conversation at least has an impact on one person mm. to want to be, get uncomfortable. Mm. Mm. And to and want to be better. So sure. just know that in the future, it's all love and even present. It's all nothing mm-hmm. but love. And I just want you to be better and to be your better self. And that's it. For sure. That's it. All right, now you got it. You got it. Hey, you got time. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'll, I'll just say that th- this was definitely thought provoking. Um, and I think like what I've taken away from it is I think we all want the same thing. Like, coming from a man perspective, coming from a woman's perspective, I think we all want the same thing that's respect. I think it's really respect of our differences, but how our differences actually make us very powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's something powerful to be a woman and stand in femininity, but it's also something very powerful to be a man and stand in masculinity. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is to stand in masculinity because I'm not a man, mm-hmm. but I know the power that I bring Mm -hmm. as a woman. Mm -hmm. And I want to respect and I guess like learn um, the power of like a man, like what a man brings in his masculinity. So I guess I'll just say like it was, we, we all want the same thing, but this said thing is going to be acquired differently because we just stand from different positions Mm -hmm. and that's okay. That is, that is okay. Like we can celebrate our differences. Mm -hmm. And I think if we did more of that, like there wouldn't be this competition. There, it doesn't have to be a competition because I'm never going to beat you at being a man because I'm not a man. Mm-hmm. You're never going to beat me at being a woman because you're not a woman. You don't know what it stand like what it is to stand as a woman. I don't know what it stands to mm-hmm. be a man. But what you can do is educate me on that. And mm-hmm. what I can do is educate you on what it is I need as a woman. And I think if we we did that, like, just let's just educate each other mm-hmm. on what we want and educate each other on how we can get acquire this said thing that we all want, mm-hmm. how we can just get it together. I guess that's how what I've taken from mm-hmm. it, like being the single Pringle, you know? So that, yeah. I think that's, um, yeah. yeah, that's what I've learned today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, my goal for this, and I'm hoping you show your husband this, and, mm-hmm. and even some on the channel, I think you'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think also, to your point about you know the dating pool have, having pee in it, <laughs> you're going to have a newfound appreciation for that man. Oh, yeah. Right? I'm and, grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, my, my big goal for this is that men um, regain an appreciation of women. Mm-hmm. and their power and their influence. And women regain an appreciation of men mm-hmm. and our power yeah. and our influence. Mm-hmm. And also an empathy, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Like what, Across the board. Empathy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to do away with this idea that some men have that they would be better women than women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or that women have that they would be better men than men, right? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, we need each other. For sure. And do. that's why we need to we talk. Do. For sure. <laughs> right? So yeah. I appreciate do. each and every one of you. And uh, episode two coming soon based coming on soon. <laughs> this brother. But yeah, that's that's a that's a wrap. That's, that's a, a wrap. test, but oh this is so good. Shit.